Hey, so welcome to the very first 2014, 13-14 uh, dressing room diary. So what this is, in case you've never seen it before, is we are in dressing room room one at the Paramount Theater. And uh, we get together with different artists and the directors of our Broadway shows and get a little behind the scenes of what's going on. So we're kicking off the year with In the Heights. And our very first guest of the year is Rachel Rockwell. Rachel, thanks for coming again. Absolutely. Yeah? So it's exciting. Today is August 19th. Yes. And technically it is the very first full cast rehearsal. It is. Doing. Yes, we just had our big meet and greet and a tour of the theater and a lot of research talk and design talks. And it was the first time we were all in the room together. And it's a very exciting, nerve-wracking Day, yeah, and it's cool because uh, I got to come to one of these and talk about who I am and what we're doing with the marketing department, that kind of stuff. And you do, you feel that energy, like mm -hmm. it's everybody start getting excited because you know four weeks from now we're opening a show September right. 11th. It's, on it. it's all possible. Yeah, you know everything is possibility today, which is good. So how long have you been working on this show? Oh man, we've been casting it since April, and we finished about three or four days ago. Wow. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, the skill sets required for the show are so unique and specialized and diverse, and we just had to find those perfect people, and we just kept looking until we found them. So, if you could, like, what would be a couple of the special skill sets for a show like this? Well, um, Graffiti Pete, it, uh, who is the um, graffiti artist Tagger, he is a break dancer in our production, and an incredible, like, one of the best b-boys in the Midwest, um, Chris Santiago, is just incredible and his skills are so, I mean, I don't know anyone in the world who can do that. It's, every time he does it, you just go, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible. And, and the dancing is, um, they're all trained dancers, but it, this is a hip-hop vernacular, kind of a hip-hop fusion vernacular with a lot of um, Latin styles of dance as well. The singing is all um, pop singing, but it's very, and rap. It's a really um, broad genre for, I mean, you know, a lot of And we've never done anything like this. No, well, there aren't any shows Broadway. like this. This is it. Right, this is yeah. like the most unique, um, freshest thing to happen to Broadway, I think, in a, in a long, long time. So let's give a little overview, if you could, of the show itself. Um, the show itself takes place in a New York neighborhood called Washington Heights, and it is um, it has a predominantly Hispanic population, mostly Dominican, also a, a Puerto Rican Cuban, um, and it happens over the course of three days in the middle of the heat of summer in Washington Heights, and uh, during the course of the play, um, people's American dream is is tested, uh, their ideas about what it means to be home, what family means, uh, is it, it all evolves over that period of three days through the lens of um, Usnavi, who is the local bodega owner, That's on, and those stores are kind of like the heart of whatever neighborhood they're in. So we're seeing this predominantly through his eyes and then um, a family of people who have given everything they have to send their daughter to Stanford, the first one of a family to go to college, carrying a neighborhood's expectation on her shoulders. Um, Abuela Claudia, the kind of neighborhood grandmother, who's grandmother to everyone, the angel of the neighborhood. Um, and during the course of the play, somebody wins the lotto. I'm not going to tell you who. Um, but somebody wins the lotto, and it is a life-changing thing in this neighborhood, but also the dreaming about who, what you would do with that money and how it would change your life is, is a, a, a big part of this neighborhood. And if you, if you won that money, would you stay in America? Would you go back to your, your native country? What, what would you do with it? You know, did you come here to stay here? Did you come here so that you could send money home, so that you could bring the rest of your family here? Like what each individual person's journey is um, will they become a citizen? Are they? Is that what they want? You know, it's it's really, it's a really amazing family story about, you know, just uh, families, relationships, and and uh, things that take place place in this really cool neighborhood. It's funny because when I got to actually read it, and then I got to see a, a video of it. It, you know, I'm from the south side of Chicago, and it very much reminds me of a neighborhood I grew Absolutely. up in. Like, you know, we're tight knit. Everybody's, you know, the kids know each other. You got the hopes, the dreams, you know, the the patriarch of our neighborhood, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And it was funny. Cordy and I were talking about it, and Cordy said it a couple times in videos and stuff. Like to him, 
you know, he drew the comparison of Fiddler on the Roof. I mean, it's, it's about family, it's about commitment, it's about tradition, mm -hmm. it's about what are you going to do after life and breaking those traditions and expectations. What, what of your culture do you take with you and what do you have to leave behind on, on the pathway to your own American dream? What, what, do you, what, cult, what traditions do you preserve? What traditions do you have to let go of? Um, it also reminds me, because it's about gentrification too, about what happens to a neighborhood when all these big box stores and chains and things come in, and what happens when all the people who rent there get kicked out so that they can put up condos. And it reminds me of what happened in the kind of North Avenue area yeah. in the city during the 90s when I first moved to Chicago. And, and you know, until, you're, uh, until you really understand what that means to the people whose neighborhood it was, yeah. you know, you're like, wow, this is so convenient. There's not, and it's like, oh yeah, but those four stores that got replaced by one store, where did those people go? Right. Where did those businesses go? What about all of those people who lived in all of that housing there? Where did they go? They didn't just disappear. They had to go somewhere. Well, it's funny. I, mean, I think you can draw the, anal the analogy to Aurora. I mean, mm -hmm. look at. This downtown area was the booming area and the, the storefronts and the personal attention and all those things. And then the mall comes in, good, bad, or indifferent, and everybody goes. Yeah. You know, like everybody, it's a, we're starting to see a resurgence again, and that's cool. And, yeah. But, you know, it's the same kind of impact it had on something like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then what does that do to the face of a neighborhood? How does that change um, the family of a neighborhood uh, at, when those things happen? So we're doing the Chicago debut, which means it was done for Broadway in Chicago, but nobody else ever got the professional rights until we actually got to do it. So how do you prepare for something like this? Because it's such a different show. It's yeah. a one-of-a-kind show. You know, we got a little additional pressure because we're doing a big debut of it and we're, yeah. we're getting it out there. And Yeah, it's, I mean, just research. It's been really an interesting piece to research for me because so much of it was stuff that, you know, I'm not a hip hop expert. I am not um, really versed in rap. Like, I needed to dig into all of these styles, dig into all of the culture, and really educate myself so that we could really tell the story. I mean, at the end of the day, the, you know, the emotions are universal, but they're told through um, the lenses of these different cultures, and you want to make certain that you're honoring everything and really educating yourself about it. So it's been a lot of prep work. I'm also working with a choreographer, which is something that I don't typically Yeah, do. normally people don't realize you actually choreograph I most do. of your own shows. I do, right? but I know that there are people who could do this better than I could, so I needed um, a choreographer. So Katie Spellman is going to be my choreographer on the show, and she's, gonna, she's working really hard to develop her own vocabulary and vernacular to um, energize this neighborhood uh, in the way that it was originally, but with her with her steps now and her point of view, so it's you know and musically it's incredibly dense because yeah. at any one time you can have four separate groups singing at the same time but singing different lyrics. Some of them are in English, some of them are in Spanish, some of them are in the style of rap. You know, it's all at the same time, and then it becomes this harmonious, incredibly harmonious thing that you wouldn't think it would, but it, it is, and it really just, it really speaks to everyone, I think. Well, you know, uh, I've actually talked to a couple of subscribers who said, well, you know, the minute you hear rap, you think MTV, and, and I said, look, it's, it, it's hard to describe, but it's not necessarily like that. You it's, know, not. it's not. It's not the kind of gangster rap you might think of. It's not. Or, what it is in this show, and how it's used in this show, is that it allows for masculine men to express themselves in an emotional and poetic way where they normally wouldn't do that where they normally either culturally or just because they're a man they wouldn't express themselves in an emotional way but this kind of poetry allows them to do that without feeling like they're compromising their masculinity and it's a really interesting thing to do it's not unlike Shakespeare it's very similar yeah. to Shakespeare and, and Nick Damaris who's playing Usnavi, who's the one who primarily raps in the show, um, he is also a hip-hop Shakespeare teacher. So he combines the, the two genres and teaches it to school kids. Um, and it's a fascinating process. Um, also freestyle rap, word association, um, spoken word poetry. So it's, it's believe me, it's not, it's not the narrow view that we suburbanites have of that um, genre. It just isn't. It's really been fascinating for me, especially Latin rap. It's so cool 
because it blends um, salsa, merengue, um, you know, in with rap music. So it's a fusion. Um, and there's never been anything like it in a musical before. It's wholly original, incredibly accessible. The rhythm of it is so infectious. I mean, it's it's like a big dance party, the whole show, really. You know, your heart rate will be up, you'll feel that, that pulsing energy of that culture, the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, we've got a drummer and two percussionists on the show. It's wow. pretty amazing. So it'll, it'll be a good time. You know, and, and while we're at it, just talking about the fact of, like, this is a family show. I mean, and, and I, we keep trying to reinforce that to people that, hey, look, you know, it's, it takes place in New York, it's in the Heights, it's, you know, uh, 182nd, right, in Washington. But look, yeah. you know, it's, it's got this diverse, beautiful music. It's this huge, high-energy, exciting dance thing. Absolutely. That, like, bring your kids, oh, bring grandma. My son, us. are you kidding me? Me, that was abuela. She's not really my abuela. He's listening to it in the car. <laughs> he can rap it better than I can. I mean, he really, he really, really digs it. And he was so excited to see who, who Snobby was going to be. Like, who'd you pick? Who'd you pick? Nice. Yeah, yeah. He's really, he's really into it. It's a, it's a really cool show. And it, and it is appropriate for our families. It's, it's yeah. A, yeah. So how do you pick your creative team for something like this? Because it's such a different show. It is a different show. It's not your show. standard. It's not. I mean, well, our music director, um, Tom Ventafredo, is young and hip um, and really smart. Also an actor. Really brings a lot to the table. Katie Spellman, again, uh, you know, really um, is inventive in terms of vocabulary and does things that I don't do. And Elizabeth Flauto, our costume designer I've known forever, she's so great at making people look real and authentic and also um, feel great about themselves on stage. Everybody always wants to buy their clothes after they do a show because they're like, <laughs> she dresses me better than I dress me. Um, and, uh, you know, our stage management team is great. Our sound designer, Jeff Dublinsky, knows this show like the back of his hand and loves it. We all love it. I think that's a big part of it is that you, there's so much passion for the material yeah. going in. We're also duly um, terrified of it because it's so, you know, it's so <laughs> intense and layered and, and complicated. But I, I think that's only wise to be a little bit afraid of. <laughs> and we've got the... Touring Broadway set, right? We do. Really, we do. Which is this cool, you can see it online, you know, we've got photos of it up, which is something we really haven't done before. Yeah. But it's beautiful and cool, and I think, you know, everyone kind of looked and said, how do you, you know, they already did it. It's this gorgeous thing, which I think just adds to everything else. Is the yeah, it's really textured and layered and realistic. Um, and as, for, as unit set goes, it's also very flexible. Like, it allows a tremendous amount of flexibility. Um, it can be literal in one moment and then very abstract in the next. Um, but you really do get the sense that it is uh, 181st to 183rd Street in Washington Heights. It's, it's really beautiful. So uh, my last two questions. You pretty much probably could pick any show from this year that you were going to get to direct. What attracted you to this show? Just how original it is and the fact that it is a whole new way to tell a musical theater story. It's just, when I saw it, I was so captivated by it and um, so pleasantly surprised. Like, I thought, I'm not, this, nothing has been like this on Broadway ever before. It was right. just such a new, fresh um, way to tell a story. And, and so that was really appealing to me. And also, the, it, it's a very emotional story. It's really emotional, and it's about families, and that's what I enjoy doing. And what's the hardest thing about doing the show for you? Um, the hardest thing about it is making it original, making it my version of what this is. You know, it, it, it's, it's so beautifully crafted that it's tough not to fall into um, existing patterns. And you want to make sure that you're not making choices just to be contrary. Um, you uh -huh. want to make sure that your choices are justified choices and that you really honor the culture and that you really tell the story um, you know, to a huge age range of people. You want to make sure that you're you're making it inclusive and and honest, and you know, it's but it's that's no different than any show. I mean, that's the goal for right. every single show.
Well, look, thank you for kicking this off for You're us. Welcome. It's always fun, and we'll be back again later in the year together doing we another will. one. September 11th, it's a Wednesday. We kick it off, and then the official media day this year is going to be the 14th. We're yeah. doing opening nights on Fridays. It's Rachel Rockwell, ladies and gentlemen. It's in the Heights. Come check it out. It's going to be an amazing, wonderful show. Thank you again, Rachel, for hanging out. Appreciate it. Thank you.